Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Soul Found Midweek Bible Study. So thankful to uh, be here and be privileged to be able to present tonight. Um, of course, many of you know that our pastor has transitioned. And so many of us, as well as you, are in, uh, in, in grieving, you know, grieving, we grieving. Everybody grieves different. However, we know as his disciples that he would want us to carry on what it, what it is that he has started. So let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, right now for this great privilege and opportunity to be here. First and foremost, Lord God, we join together as one family of believers. And we ask, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would comfort the Cloud family. Comfort the entire family, Lord God. No, comfort them at the times when they're trying to sleep, when they're trying to breathe, when they're trying to just make sense out of the day. For the lost of their father, their husband, their uncle, their brother, their friend, and everything else that he's meant to so many, but to them, he was their all. He was big, his granddaughter, he was a grandfather. Comfort them, Lord, as only you can, Lord God, as only you can. We thank you, Lord, and we know, Lord God, that you are faithful God, and so we thank you, and it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, family, let's get to it as you come into the room. Hallelujah. I hope you all are having a wonderful and amazing day as much as possible. Um, yeah. You, uh, as you come in, I hope you have something to write with. This is Bible study. Tonight is going to be a good night. It's going to be with God. Every night that we worship, every night that we get to share God's word is a good night. Every day that we get to share God's word is a good day. So I'm not going to belabor the point. I don't know how long we be here. I know we won't be very long. However, whatever the spirit tells me to do tonight, I will be doing as always. And he leads and guides us all. You just got to listen. Tonight, this is Miraculous Love Part 2. Part 1 was done by Sister Felicia on Sunday. This is Part 2. Miraculous Love. <laughs> Um, I want to start this off by sharing with you something that uh, was shared in Sunday service. It was something that Felicia shared, and it was a conversation between friends. One friend said, I feel, I feel strange. Either I don't care or I'm no longer concerned. And the other friend said, don't try to feel your way back into control. That stuck out to me. Why did that stick out to me? Here's why. I had wrote my note, I had wrote, most of the, most of the time we move off how we feel. We move off how we feel. This thought, though, this thought through though is more than feelings, meaning the thought that the person was having that I no longer concern, don't or either I don't care. This more than a thought. You have to understand at that time. It was more than a thought. It was the beginning of a paradigm shift. The thought that the person had that I feel strange, either I don't care or I no long, I'm no longer concerned. To me, the revelation that I get with that when I thought about it, it's the beginning of a paradigm shift. What's a paradigm shift? I'm going to give you a visual of a paradigm shift. 
Marlene, pull my picture up. I want you to look at that picture. Look at it. See that picture? At that time, the thought of a paradigm shift was not even in that young man's head. Put the camera back, put me spotlight me, spotlight me again. This is the paradigm shift. So a paradigm shift is a process. Pull that picture back up again, please. During that process of the paradigm shift, what had to happen for that young man to have a paradigm shift and to become the young man that he is now, or the older man, but the young man that he is now, I want you to write these words down. I'm going to do the same. For that paradigm shift to happen in my life, your life, anybody life to have a paradigm shift from one space to another, well, this particular space, which is a space that need I needed to be delivered from, I needed a paradigm shift. So let me use me. It can be that picture there. You can put drugs. You can put all the things that you think will be going on in somebody's life that don't have Christ that don't have the spirit of God leading them and guiding them. The spirit of God is present, but this person cannot see it. This person is moving on feelings, how he feel each day, what he feel he needs to do. So if I was to put around that picture, the things that it took to make this person have a paradigm shift, one of the words would be surrender took place. Uh, transparency took place. Write these words down. Uh, transparency took place. Honesty took place. We're talking about having a paradigm shift what it took, what had to take place for me to change from that picture to now. Transparency, integrity, had to take place. Accountability had to take place. Humility had to take place. All these things had to take place for that paradigm shift to happen. In our lives right now, we deal with many, many things. Life just happens. And so we can't stop it. No matter how we feel, we can't stop it. We have to exist in the unfolding of life with all its ups and downs, in and out, uh, highs and lows, joys and pain, whatever. We have to exist in it. The key to existing in it successfully is understanding that there is an everlasting living God that is before us, that's leading us and guiding us when we surrender to him, when we surrender to him and begin to walk in the fruits of the spirit, we begin to understand what's needed. And in our life, there, have, there will happen a paradigm shift will begin to happen. It's going to make sense as we go along. I had in my note, as, as, I've, as I've matured, there are many things that I no longer concern myself with. Open to everything attached to nothing. Life gets to unfold around me and I don't need to try to control the outcomes of my life. True surrender is not needing to control the outcomes of life, the outcomes of life's unfolding. Put my first slide up for me, please. Psalms 131. Read it with me, y'all. Lord, my heart is not proud, nor my eyes haunty, nor do I involve myself in great matters or in things too difficult for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul like a winged child resting with his mother. My soul is like a winged child within me, composed and free from discontent. 
O Israel, hope in the Lord. You take it down. Hope in the Lord. And I just drew my line to that last statement I made. True surrender for me is not needing, needing to control the outcomes of life's unfolding. I just put hope in the Lord. See, hope in the Lord is not just hope in the Lord. Hope is in the Lord is me having a knowing. As I go into the situation, as I go into life, that the Lord is there. That he's available to me. He's always looking to, to deliver me, deliver you, deliver us from whatever it is that we could possibly be worrying about because the word tells us don't worry about anything, but we do. No matter what, we do. We can talk, we can be in church all day long. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I believe you. Falling down, you're running through, whatever. But then something hit. Bam. Now I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to fix it opposed to just sitting in it, allowing God to show me and learn from whatever it is that I need to learn from it. And as it starts to change, as God starts to deliver me, I get something new that will carry me on the next leg of the way. But we got to hope in the Lord. And hope in the Lord, it, hope is it's more than, hey, I hope in the Lord. It's more than just talking. It's more than a bunch of feelings and emotions and running around. It's, 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 a, it's a knowing. It's a knowing. One of the things I said, um, I was talking to someone about baptism. When I got baptized, when I went to get baptized, I got baptized because I knew something. I knew that I was tired. I knew that I was ready. I only been baptized one, and I think it was back in 98 or something like that. And I told myself, if I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this all the way. And baptism was the way to the Lord. It was part of the process of me being delivered and going into salvation. Me at first taking the walk saying, Lord, change my life. Um, um, release me from my sins. I repent. Repentance was my number one thing. I had to get out denial. How many of y'all are, are walking in denial? You're walking denial. You are walking denial. You're denying a whole lot of truths about yourself. How do you know? Because you stay in some mess. And so for me, I had to make sure that I was going to do this because I had tons of times where I played with God and <laughs> And life stayed like that. It, it was just jacked up. It was like that picture. You saw how that picture was looking. Next slide, please. Slide two. Hoping in the Lord. Hoping in the Lord. We're talking about, we talking about miraculous love. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin. The Lord does not count against them and in whose spirit is no deceit. Hold that up for a minute. I want y'all to write that word down or yeah, write that word down, deceit. Deceit. Take that down for me and put up the next slide for me, please. And we're gonna hold that up for a minute. I'll tell you when to take it down. The action or practice of deceiving someone by concealing or misrepresenting the truth. So a lot of times, <laughs> me for myself, I was misrepresenting the truth. Uh, when I would show up in that space that you saw earlier or in that former life of mine, and the, the, the lie was that I, I'm a father. The lie was that I was a man, that I was a husband. The lie was that I was a brother. The lie was that uh, I'm a, uh, I had integrity, that uh, I had uh, character, uh, I had good conversation, the, the, the whole lot. I was deceiving everyone who encountered me then. And in order for that not to take place no more, I had to know and have hope. And I had to have hope in God, but I had to know that God was going to deliver me. And guess what? You can take it down. It didn't, I didn't know, like, you know something. I didn't know then. I'm telling you, I didn't know then. It was a spirit that was pushing me. It was telling me. It was moving me. Why? Because in my soul, one of the things I want y'all to understand tonight, I want you to understand something. Man is made of 
spirit, body, and soul. God breathed breath into the body, the spirit into the body. The body then formed a soul. The soul had a free will, free will of being a God and woo, live it up, love it. Then God said, don't eat of this tree. So now we have the free will to choose right or wrong, good or evil. Come on. So during that time, during that time when I was deceiving people, I had to make up in my mind, in my soul, I had to, the will, your will, your soul will choose, choose which way to go. Choose do what you what you will to do. God is not going to force me to do anything or you to do anything. It has to be you have to will to do it. You have to want to do. It. You have to. It has to be not just a thought. It has to be no. It has to be like breathing. If that makes sense, it has to be like breathing. See all the things that we are dealing with in life as individuals. We are dealing with them because we choose to deal with them. Because if we didn't choose to deal with them, we wouldn't be dealing with them. It sounds simple. However, we have a we have created this need in our life. It is you. We are where we are because of choices we made. We are where we are because of the choices we made to do or not to do what we should have done during the situation. All right, let's pull up our next slide, please. Dear deceit, this is Psalms 37. Let's read it. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hands. Keep it up. You see it? Come on, I need somebody to see this and hear me now. Let's go. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who what? Delights. Write that word down. Write them three words down. Delights in him. Write delights in the Lord. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hands. See, I can see the Lord upholding me with his hands then. I was, in my former life, do you see the Lord upholding you in your situation? If you don't see that, then this is why you don't have, this is why it's not changing. We keep looking in the, we're looking for something in the natural. That spirit is in the, it's in the invisible. 25, I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend free. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from your, turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the, in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. You can take it down. I want us to focus on the first 23 and 24, which said delight in him. Though he may stumble, he will not, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with his hands. Let's it says, I was, I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. God is not, is not going to see you, a righteous person, a righteous, a righteous individual who seeks him, who delights, who delights in him, to gonna see you fall. He's going to uphold us in his hand. But we have to have a knowing about who he is in our lives. It can't just be Sunday. It can't just be Wednesday. It has to be every day, all day. In the decisions that we're making, you know how you feel. You know what you're saying in your out your mouth is not what you're thinking in your head. You're thinking, you're saying different things, so you are imposter. You're just trying to deceive the most high God. That's impossible. This is why life is so jacked up because 
we will walk around as though God can't see through walls or that you can hide from God. It's impossible. It is impossible. And so with that said, that was one of the things I had to come to. The conclusion was, Dave, God was, Dave, God is with you as you striking this match to hit this, this brother, whatever you was doing. God is, God is right here, Davey. He's right there next to you. What are you doing? You know, hey, at that time, I wasn't even in church, but I knew there was a God because I was, I was getting confronted with things that should have wiped me from the face of this earth, but it did. And eventually I woke up. I woke up because I fell down and I cried and I surrendered. Didn't have no way to go. You gonna wait for, you need all that to happen to you? Listen, if all of us would look at the, <laughs> the consequences that other people go through, we would change our lives. Look, if you seen with a crackhead or a drug addict or alcoholic or, 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 or adulterous and all the stuff that these people go through that does these, these unlawful things, why would you do them? I'm telling you, it's a demonic activity happening in the earth. And the only thing that can, can defend you and guard you is the spirit of God in your life, flowing through your life. You walking in it. You walking in integrity. Walking in humility. You walking in these things. <coughs> you walking in, in thorough and complete communication. You walking in accountability. You walking in no betrayal of confidence. You walking in, in integrity, honesty and integrity. Humility. Did I say that? You walking in these things. See, we we at the church of the we at the church of the Lord Disciples, Soul Factor, and all the other names. But one of the things I want y'all to understand is stood on these principles right here. From the beginning, they are called the dream keys. They are called uh, the, the values, uh, what, what, what this ministry values. So if you're a part of this ministry, or if you're watching this ministry, we not, this is a ministry of transformation. It has always been, it will always continue to be. And so understanding that, so this is what it's going to take for your life to have a paradigm shift family. You cannot have a paradigm shift with the same funky character that you're walking in. You can't, you got to change. You got to surrender to God. Know that God loves you. Know that we love, know that's what miraculous love looks like. Miraculous love. Who could ever think that Dave Thompson is, is a vessel of God? What? Come on now. I don't even think my wife really believes sometimes. She be saying stuff. I'm like, girl, you know what? God working on me. <laughs> Come on. I want y'all to know that miraculous love is real and it's meant for all of us, we have to surrender. All right, what we have, bring up the next slide, please. What we got? Okay, we, we're getting it. We're getting it. All right, this, this, keep this up. This here is dear to my heart, y'all. Because early in ministry, I was getting dealt with so much. I was, I, man, my pastor, all of all of guys that worked in the ministry early in the in the nineties and 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 the two thousand in the two thousand and the nineteen whatever all that in the in the two thousand man following these keys man. I still have these things plastered and they are in me though now though. It was hard. So this scripture right here, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain, meant so much to me. I tell you family, this is a true scripture. For, for us to live is Christ. Meaning we should live, take it down, we should live with the, with the fruits of the spirit trying to produce them every day, all day. It's hard. It's a knockdown battle. But again, in your soul, in your soul, if you allow, if you allow the, the Holy Spirit to control your will, you will get there. Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. To die is game. Why? Because I'm with Christ. Because I would have fought the good fight. 
I would have done all that is mine to do. Are you doing all that is yours to do? Whoever you are, if you've ever been in this ministry, if you ever came across this, these messages, whenever you came through, have you, have you transformed your life? Have you transformed somebody else's life? Because everybody that's come through this ministry, that's in this ministry, is a disciple of the Lord. And if you not, what have you been doing? And that's what I'm saying, family. We are not weak. We are strong in the Lord. The Lord will lead and guide us. The Lord loves us. It's a miraculous Lord that's transforming, that will take out of any situation, that will allow us to become everything that his heart desires for us. Whatever God has planned for us, we're going to have. Whatever God don't want us to have, we won't have. For all of us that believe in God and had allowed the Holy Spirit to control our will and not just let our will control itself and we do anything. So, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. All right. Last scripture. Pull that up for me. We ain't finished. This is the last scripture. But we are all in scripture. Hold on. It says, hold on to instructions. Do not let it go. God it well for it's your life. Hold that up. Everybody, write that Proverbs 4.13 down. I'm going to read it one more time. Hold on to instructions. Do not let it go. God it well for it's your life. Take it down. We're on some good time here. This scripture, Proverbs 13, 413, 413. Hold on to instructions. Do not let it go. God it will, for it, it is your life. The Torah, we call it the Lord's instructions. The whole Bible for me is instructions. Proverbs, all of all of his instructions. Then there are many, many, many books. That we instruct all wisdom for me comes from God. I'm not running one down one lane. All wisdom, it all belongs. It's a book we we we've been reading or we read. Uh, it all belongs. That's another thing. So remember this: hold on to instructions. Do not let it go. God, it will for it is your life. Do you understand <laughs> that these words that comes across these airways? By this ministry and others, but I'm dealing with this ministry because I know what we stand on. It says, hold on to the instructions. There have been many instructions, many, many. God instructs us all day long. It ain't got to be a bunch of instructions. It could be just one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's an instruction. Hold on to it for it's your life. Do you believe it's your life? Do you believe it's your life? See, a lot of time we out, we... It was said in a service, I, I believe brother, brother Will did it. And it said, we come to church like this. Opposed to coming to church like this. Surrender. Help me, Lord. And then living out that surrender, not just for that moment. See, a lot of us think we fooling God. But God is so loving. His love is so miraculous that he takes that weight off our shoulder for a minute. He moves whatever that is out of the way for us. And then see if there's a level of gratitude for what he's done in your life, what he's done for you. But see, the level of gratitude for me ain't got nothing to do with what he do now or what he might do tomorrow or what he might do uh, any other day. No, I, what he done in the, bad, in the past. Oh, I'm grateful. Are you grateful? Are you grateful for what God has already done for you? Gratitude don't look like complaining. Gratitude ain't talking about what I don't have. Gratitude ain't talking about how life is unfolding in front of me. I can't do this, man. It's woe is that. That ain't life. That ain't gratitude. Gratitude is, Lord, you know what, God? I see this. Now, what is it that you want me to learn from this? And you sit for the answer. And you might not get it until I don't know when. But you sit and you sit with a smile on your heart. With a with a with a a, a a soul that's controlled 
that the will is controlled by the Holy Spirit and you're content with what you do have. That's for somebody. That's for me. So hold on to instructions. Do not let it go. God it will, for it is your life. Family, when I tell you that not since some real, 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 real tough things in my life have I been in this space that I'm in now. Like many of you who have who are in this ministry, who have came through this ministry, who know this ministry, you know the message that's been given here. However, we as disciples, those of us that have been here, that has had our hands to the plow, those who have had their hands to the plow early in the year, know and are without excuse, without excuse of what it costs to have this level of deliverance in our own personal lives, the level of gratitude that should be shown out of each and every one who's ever had the privilege of being discipled by the truth of the Lord that came through this ministry and through his vessel, Deron Andre Big Daddy Cloud, is without excuse. You're without excuse. I'm sorry. You're without excuse. This is not a beat down. This is miraculous love. You know how I know it's miraculous love? Because I saw the scripture tell us, love them as love, love those, love them as I've loved you. So when I think about this word, and when I think about the word of God, it was delivered to me through a vessel. As well as I read it, each time the vessel exhibited it, this is where we miss out at. When we don't exhibit the word, we might know it. And we might know it and we might exhibit in the throng of a building sitting around a bunch of people in what we what, what they call as a church setting. But when we out and ain't nobody around, but the eyes of the Lord is on us always. It says the ways of man are in full view of the Lord. You better believe it. We are not walking in gratitude. See, one of the things that was said that I said to my pastor years ago, we was having some kind of celebration for the church. It was a church celebration. It was the anniversary of the church. I don't know what year, what it was. And I was speaking. I was handling. I was speaking. I looked at him and Jill. They were sitting up there. And I said, there is nothing, nothing I could give you for the transformation that has taken place in my life due to the sacrifice that y'all have made for it to happen. Not just for me, this is for many. So I say, what I can do is tell you that I will work hard and intentionally to transform myself to every code of character conduct and conversation you have led me to that has helped me transform my life and I will live by that always and when I don't I will repent immediately glory to the God hallelujah for there is nothing else you can give to someone who pulled out their life who did all there was to do that he had to do. You got your to do. He knew his to do. He did all he had to do until there was nothing left. 
And then he transitioned. Come on now. But guess what? See, it's not over. It was never meant to be over. He poured into all those people. Everyone who's saying all this and that. It ain't about a celebration of physical things for you to see, for me to see, for people to see. No, it's about a transformation in your life where you walk different, where you look like the fruits of the spirit, where you get knocked down and you get back up. Mm. That's when you honor the life and the legacy that is the vessel used by the Most High God, the Most High Yah, to deliver many. That's when you show gratitude, when you're walking. Not when you're talking, but when you're walking. And that is the fight, that is the battle that I'm going to fight until the day I die. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I got something for you. I believe I gave this to my pastor on his birthday one time. I never knew you couldn't have told me that this would be the exact words that in my heart and in the spirit, I believe that he would share with each and every person that would ever listen to it or hear it. And here we go. For each of us eventually, whether we are ready or not, someday it will come to an end. There will be no more sunrises, minutes, hours, or days. All the things you collected, rather treasured or forgotten, will pass to someone else. Your wealth, fame, and temporal power will shrivel to irrelevance. It will not matter what you owed or, own, or owned, your, struck, your grudges, resentments, frustrations, and jealousies will finally disappear. So too, your hopes, ambitions, plans, and to-do lists will expire. The wins and losses that once seemed so important will fade away. It won't matter where you came from or what side of tracks you live. At the end, it won't matter if you are, if you are beautiful or brilliant. Even your gender and skin color will be irrelevant. So what will matter? How will the value of your days be measured? What will matter is not what you bought, but what you built. Not what you got, but what you gained. What will matter is not your success, but your significance. What will matter is not what you learn, but what you taught. What will matter is every act of integrity, compassion, courage, or sacrifice that enriched, empowered, or encouraged others to emulate your example. What will matter is not your competence, but your courage. What will matter is not how many people you knew, but how many will feel a lasting loss once you're gone. What will matter is not your memories, but the memories that live in those who loved you. A life lived that matters is not of circumstance, but of choice. A beautiful truth for my brother, my pastor. 
the wrong time. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you have graced us with such wisdom. You have given us an opportunity once again to hear your word. Let the power of your word transform those who will hear and those who are willing to do. We thank you, Lord. Again, we ask for the comforting spirit to visit the family of our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for this great privilege and opportunity once again to be present and hear a word from you. And it's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I say amen.